Hello, is everyone able to hear me? Hello, are you able, guys able to hear me? Just a moment. Eleven people in this room, but I've given them. Are you guys able to see? If you have any questions, right in. Question, stop me if I'm moving. And, or you can just send me a chat message. They pop up in my other screen. So if I don't see you for a second, it let me know. And, uh, so some of you guys may be relatively. Page and you may have visited and hopped around a little, but I'm going to go through all the features and aspects of the then some that will be helpful so that you are successful. In so this is our homepage. It's our starting buttons on the bottom. Don't worry if you don't have those. <laughs> you have uh, all of your information about the course on this. If we scroll down have the SimNet technical support number that you can call if you're having issues with CAs and Ms. Marshall are able to but if you're having a specific problem with the actual SimNet program with a button or something like that you aren't able to access them from the, the technical so you'll want to discuss that with SimNet and they have a them any put it right here on the home page not hard to find number two is our ta office hours there's office hours spread out throughout the entire week and we'll also have a conference for office hours um three to four on wednesday if there's another problem you can always contact us and we'll we'll schedule something to help you but there's a variety of office hours available for you guys, so stop in, no appointment necessary, except for the uh, Canvas conference that will be most likely through this program that we're using now, and I will just set it up and send you an invite, but you will have to, <laughs> of course, let me know that, that you need to be online with me. Um, these are your two TAs. This is Dean, and this is me. Uh, up in the right corner of your screen, unfortunately, I'm not in a group, so I don't see it here, but you should have a group listed. It's either Cove or Osprey. You're going to need to use that to submit your initial assignment and uh, identify your TA. So that's the person you're going to want to contact if you have issues with your grades. Um, say you did an assignment in SimNet and it hasn't updated or somebody has, you know, you, you aren't sure why you got a grade for something. You can let uh, either me or Dean know whichever one's your appropriate TA and we'll, we'll be able to hopefully provide you with the answers you need. So I'm going to walk you through the course. If you have if you're not familiar with Canvas, um, we'll get you familiar right away. <laughs> So the first thing we want to look at here is our syllabus. And I'm going to click on it. It is a quite lengthy document. Take me one second. So familiarize yourself with some items in the syllabus. There is just a ton of information in there. 
and I'm just going to show you a couple of key things in there that I, that I don't want you to miss out on. Uh, we have your office hours in here as well, and of course, if you have any major questions about the uh, the course, you can you can look in here. So we're going to scroll down to whew, lots of pages. Uh, here's your TA duties in here. If you are interested in contacting your TA, there's an outline of our course here. That this is what I really wanted you to see is the breakdown of your final grade. So you can see that the um, introduce, introduce yourself, just discuss your discussion questions is worth about 1% of your final grade. Discussions two and three are worth about 4%. The lessons are worth 22% and our exams are worth 33% and our projects are worth 40. So projects are a significant portion of your grade. It is extremely important that you get your projects done on time. When assignments are turned in late, there's a 30% penalty for late work. So when you start turning in your projects late, it significantly impacts your ability to do well in the class. A description of these different types of assignments are in here, but we're going to look at those right in our program. And at the bottom of this page, I wanted you to see the grading policy. Notice that a 94 to 100 is an A. We have A minuses, B pluses. Um, these are the different thresholds you have to meet to get certain grades. I need a little water. Um, so it's a very important for you to get that 94 if you want to get that A to do all of your work. Unfortunately, we have a variety of extra credit that will be available throughout the term. I suggest you take advantage of it uh, so that when you get to the last week of classes and you're you're, you're at a 92.8, you're not upset that you can't get to the next, uh, that you get an A minus. So there's all sorts of other information in here that will, you can go through, uh, how to get SIMNAT. I'm not going to go over that because you guys have indicated already that you are registered for SIMNAT. So I'm going to go back to my homepage now, and there's a lot of stuff in here that you're going to want to access and know where it is. So I'm going to start with... Uh, Put out my list, make sure I don't miss anything for you. All right. Um, we have over here, we have modules, assignments, announcements, SIMNET, grades, and syllabus. And you're going to want to use all of these tabs from time to time. Let's see if I have them broken down here. Yes, I do. All right. I'm not going to go over all of the registering with SIMNET. What I am going to do is right now click on SIMNET. And you are going to need to take as part of your assignment posting for the first week, you're going to have to show that you've accessed SimNet. It doesn't have to be a paid subscription if you're using the 14-day free trial. That's sufficient for now. Um, but you do need to be able to show that you've actually logged in. If you need help with that afterwards or I've missed somebody who's maybe come late, uh, I will be glad to help you walk you through that after we go through the rest of the course. Go back over SimNet next. So once you're inside SimNet, you'll notice it's set up into groups. We have some tabs up here at the top. One is library, grades, and assignments. I don't use the grades all that much. The library is something a lot of students don't realize is available to you. This has books that you can use to read and find more information on the topics in the course. There's so much content available here for you and so many ways that no matter what kind of learner you are, there will be something that works for you. So you can click on any of these books and there's a chapter list. You can click on the chapters. I want to learn more about databases today. And I can go through and work and launch and go through any of these chapters and, and read the information. Uh, back under our assignments tab, we have groups. In our first week, which is this week, you'll notice there's two resources. Uh, and a little note that says you're required to send your orientation, which you guys are doing today. And these resources that are in green are available for you for learning, but they are not graded assignments. And I'll go over more how to tell between what's a graded assignment and what is not a graded assignment when we get a little bit further on in the tutorial. So we have these two resources in here. I'm going to go back to my assignments tab again. I'm going to look in week one. That's where you're going to start having some real assignments due. 
Now, I have orange and green assignments in here, which are the sim book readings, which are those books I showed you before, but these are the chapters that pertain particularly to the lesson. And we also have a resource here, which is how to take your SimNet exam. So if you're if you miss something or I don't, you want a little extra help on how to take the exam, it's right in here. And you have lessons and exams. You also have projects which you'll be able to see in week two. And we're going to go into the project in a minute. In a minute, but I'm going to show you the lessons first. So if I click on lesson, I can click take lesson. Just scroll down, it's going to have these zero out of one, zero out of ones. These shows you what portions and pieces of the lessons. You can see tw there's 26 activities in here. It will take you a little bit of time to complete this, even if you're good with Microsoft Word. Uh, it still does take a, take a little bit of time. So these assignments are due at 4 o'clock each day. Make sure that you start them before 3.50. <laughs> So when I go into the lesson, it's going to open up this SimNet screen, and it's going to have three buttons here. These buttons are Show Me, Guide Me, and Let Me Try. And each of the activities in here will have one. So in addition to the text here that gives you information on how to do the assignment, you can click on Show Me, and I think it's going to talk. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. So this will show you and walk you through how to do exactly what it wants. It's just going to show you how to do it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to Guide Me. Guide Me is going to walk you step by step, and it's going to give you a prompt after each of these. So I'm going to click the network icon. Oh, where's the network icon? Is this it? There we go. I'm joking. I knew where it was. All right. So I hit Continue. It's going to tell me, click the wireless network name Triad Link. I'm going to click it. Continue. Click Connect. Click Next, and then it will cl close automatically. Um, so that just walks you how to do it. The thing that is going to count for you, though, in your as completing the actual activity in here is the Let Me Try. So when you click the Let Me Try, this is where you actually have to do the task, and you're going to get points for it. So it tells me to click the icon that will show me the networks. You can see this is exactly what I did, exactly what it showed me. Um, from the notification connector to the network she should use. So it wants me to click here. I'm guessing they want me to click on the secured one. There we go. All right, so now that I've completed that, I can exit out of here. Well, it would be nice if I could. All right, and then this page will refresh for me when I exit, and you can see I've earned the point for that one, so I've completed one of the activities. And as you go through, they will all get complete. Some of them can be a little bit tricky. The good thing about them is you have three opportunities to do each one. And um, you can take these lessons as many times as you want. So if you need to go back in and, and work on them again, you can just go back in, retake the lesson. Now, I'm going to go in now and look at my exam. The exams are a little bit more formal. So notice I am on attempt blank of three. I actually started this one yesterday with another group. I close this tab because it's hiding behind my thing up here. All right, so I'm on question two. And the exams for each question, you'll notice up here it's attempt one of three. So I have three attempts to answer each question correctly. It will show you up here what it's asking you to do. And if you get it wrong, it tells you wrong. There's no time limit. The only thing I caution you is, I'm going to get this one wrong on purpose. File, share. I got it wrong. Notice I'm on question 2 of 29 here. When I hit OK, it's going to put me on the next question. So if you, I want to go back and reattempt that question, I have to hit my back button. Now I'm back on 2, and now I can do save document in OneDrive. Save. Oh wants me to do and it's gonna tell me here what it wants me to do say that sorry um, so it's gonna tell me and give me a little hint when I get it wrong now I've done it wrong twice I better make sure I do it right this time 
hit save as, it wants me to save in OneDrive, and it wants me to name it business. If it has a space in there, make sure that you do that. Now I got it correct. So let's say like, I just heard my husband walk in the door. Um, let's say you are in that situation and oh, you have kids and you have to run or something's gotten in your way and you need to leave the test in the middle. So I can go up here and hit X and it's gonna give me two options, save progress and end exam. End exam submits it for scoring. You do not wanna do that because it uses up your attempt for the exam. So I wanna hit save progress and then I wanna just save my exam. Now when I return to my exam, I will be at the same spot. So if I go back into the exam, I'm still on my first attempt for this exam and notice I'm right back where I was. So it's important that you guys know that and it's important you also know that there are three attempts for each exam. So not only can you attempt each question three times, you can attempt each exam in its entirety three times. So there are lots of opportunities for you to do well on your exams. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out now. Second. Uh, okay, so the one of the things that you'll notice when you start working through questions and things is that you'll get a grade notification, especially if you just go in and open an assignment. You might just go and open the assignment, not work in it, and then leave it to come back to later, which is perfectly fine. But what happens is, I have a grade. <laughs> it grades exactly what I have completed. And all I've completed here is one question. So I have 0.77 out of 20. So don't be surprised if right when you start, or if you, maybe you click a couple of different weeks and you look at different assignments in different weeks, or you start one and then don't come back if, if you have a grade that looks like this. Don't, don't stress about that if the assignment isn't complete. Now, if you've completed this assignment, let's say I've completed the lesson for intro chapters, and my grade did not update right away. It happens. Uh, SimNet can be sluggish sometimes to sync the grades. And I will manually sync these each Friday. So I go in and look for ones that haven't been updated. So I'll go in and manually sync these each Friday. Um, but if you notice one's lingering, feel free to shoot me an email and let me know, hey, I, I, I did the intro chapters two days ago and it's, it's still. But give it overnight to catch up. SimNet that does record your progress and exactly when you logged in and everything. So I, you won't get a late penalty if you submit it in SimNet on time. That's just a communication error with uh, Canvas. It just takes it a minute sometimes. We don't know why it does that for particular things. But um, I'm going to go ahead into group two now. now we're going to look at a project. So again, in here, my orange, my happy orange and green, I don't have to do, but they're there for me if I'm struggling. When you get to some of the later Excel chapters, where you're doing a lot of formulas and things, these can be a benefit, especially if you're finding something difficult or if something's interesting to you and you wanna learn a little more about it. So I don't have to do these. There are video walkthroughs here for the um, projects that you can use to help get a little bit more information on how to do this project. Now the blue, so our purple, our red, and our blue are our, are our graded assignments in here. And see, I've already submitted this. Um, the projects, uh, this first project you have here, you have three attempts for each project. The first one you have four because one of your assignments for your introductory post is, or your, in, your orientation post is for you to download these files and to submit them and, you know, play around with this project and make sure that you can submit them. So we gave you an additional submission for this. You can go ahead and work through the project if you like and uh, use that additional submission to your benefit. But uh, so when I go into do a project, I will automatically, when I, when I open this up, you'll get the best practices will pop up. I didn't because I've already submitted this one. I'm gonna go over what's in this best practice document right now and um, give you a little bit of information. One thing that we do want to remind you is, is you should be in Chrome or Firefox. I'm not sure that this works really well in Internet Explorer or Edge. Um, if, you're, if you're having trouble getting some of the SimNet things to work, I suggest you switch browsers for a little while and see if, see if that solves your issue. <laughs> um, 
And sometimes these don't work on a Mac. And um, some people get them to work, some don't. So this course is designed to be done on a Windows computer. So if you're having difficulty with a project, getting it to submit and getting, getting the work done, that could be a reason why. So we suggest if you're working on a Mac and you're working and you're having difficulties, um, go ahead and try it out on a Windows computer. Um, I know some of you guys are not local, so that's hard, but uh, that would be my best suggestion. Uh, there's, there's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> this just, it's the way the course is designed. Even though it has downloads for uh, Mac, those are not necessarily going to function for you. So anyway, we're going to go through all of this. Uh, there's a whole bunch of information in here if you would, uh, if you're interested. One of the things you need to do, know is that there are resources in zip files in a couple of the projects, and uh, I believe there are later projects in Word and uh, Excel. So you'll need to download and extract the zip files. So that you will need to pay attention to when you get to that. Um, or just email us if you're having trouble with it. So once I've downloaded the best practices, I can grab my instructions. I'm going to want to grab my Office for Windows instructions. And it's going to give me a PDF document. Open that right now. Okay, so it's going to give me this PDF document that walks me step by step, and it is extremely detailed on what you need to do for each step of your uh, project. So as you scroll down, you can see it, they're quite lengthy, and you, you really do need to start at the beginning and go to the end, or you will have difficulty with them. This is, You're going to submit an actual Word document. It's not through a simulator for this one. I'm going to make that small. Then you're also going to need the start file. The start file will be a Word, PowerPoint, Excel, whatever unit we're on, in. It will be a, a project. And when it is downloaded, it will have your name as its file name here. Mine is test, test student because it's a, um, a test student in here. Uh, you'll want to click Enable Editing if you get this line, and that will allow you to edit this document. Once you've downloaded the document, you need to save it somewhere that you know you can find it. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I have created a folder that is called, yes, 1100, all this stuff's in it. Um, in my documents, I made myself a folder that said CGS 1100. This isn't where I usually keep my stuff, but I put it in here because it's easy for you guys to see. Um, but uh, I have a CGS, and I have a my file is located in here. This is the one from yesterday. Okay, and I'm just actually going to... Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, if you're not familiar, you can work um, with two things on your screen. If you pull your window all the way to the left or right, out to the side, um, not up to the top corner, but to just straight up to the side, it will fill half the screen. And then you can select what you want to be on the other side, which is this. And then you can work like this. It's not a great way to work on Word, but if you do need, if you are having difficulty and you, you, you can't, you don't have dual monitors. I, I put, I have a second monitor and that's really nice. You can put the instructions on one. You can also just go kind of old school and, and print it out. Has anyone in here tried this already to um, access any of the projects? So I'm going to follow the instructions here that asked me to change the margins of the document. That's in layout, margins, custom. So you're going to go in here, and I'm going to change 0.75. I'm going to change the right to 0.75. I'm just going to change a couple of things so you can see how this is graded. Uh, themes are in design, document formatting. And it's asking me for integral. I know that's in here. There it is. And then it's asking me to change the colors to aspect. Pick aspects all the way at the bottom. There it is. So I've done that. Um, so I changed the theme of the document. I can change the font size. You can do a variety of things. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Actually, I'm not going to save this. I'll just use my old file. 
So once you've finished doing this, once you've finished and you've make sure you save your file, um, you're going to upload your file to SimNet for automatic grading. So you select upload your file and I'm going to go in here and here's the file and I'm going to upload that file. Now when I upload that file to SimNet, it's going to say yes, submit the file or no, I'm not ready. So if you were at a school computer and you were working on it and you weren't sure you did it right or you're working somewhere else because maybe you went to go use somebody else's computer, you can upload your file here and say, no, I'm not ready. And it will just sort of sit here. And then if you want to click on it, you can download that file again and work on it again. Especially if maybe you think you're done and you want to get with somebody and ask them, you know, hey, is this how we do this? But you have to submit the file for grading. If you don't submit it for grading, um, it, it won't be graded. So if, when I select grade my file, grade my file is going to take that file in and it's going to run it through SimNet and they're going to automatically grade it for you. No, this is not your file on the right. I thought it was for a minute, but <laughs> it's not. It's going to tell you what you did right and what you did wrong. So in a file like this where I did so many things wrong, maybe you entered some spaces in and moved some stuff around you shouldn't have or did it completely wrong, you're going to want to download a fresh file and start over. Again, you have three submissions. But for something where it's maybe small, you might want to just go back and say, oh, I, I didn't increase my indent on this line. I need to go ahead and do that. And so I'll just work on it. You can see I, I, I didn't do anything. Else. Uh, I got one thing right. Um, and then you can use that feedback to update and fix your file. One of the things you're going to need to do and that you were asked to do is to take a snip, I believe, of, excuse me, hold on one second. One thing that she's at, you're asked to do is to take a selfie with the project and the SimNet login in the background. So uh, you can go ahead and submit it like this if you like or have your file open and uh, ha take that selfie with that. So make sure you get that done as part of that. You can see I've got a 12% on this. If I go back to my grades, my grades, and you can see I've got, where's that project? Yikes, not a great grade. Um, but again, that's why I have a 9.62 because I, I didn't finish the assignments. All right, let me make sure I got through everything in there I want to show you. Do you guys have any questions about SimNet? Okay. Done that. We've done the exam. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is show you the Modules tab. The Modules tab has a lot of information on it. Um, notice it says Windows, not Mac down here. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not being mean. Um, but there's, in this first, uh, in the modules, in your start here, it's got a lot of information that you can use to figure stuff out if you didn't get it from the video or if you want, you know, more information. And then each unit in here has a variety of information in here. Under here we have project videos, so I can click Word project videos. And one of our TAs from a previous term went through each project and recorded how to do every single thing in that project. So if you're having difficulty with a project, you can go to modules review the videos, and get all the help you need to finish that. You can also go into each unit and get some information about what is involved in that unit. It's a nice, uh, sort of concise place to get all of the information. Um, we've got word shortcut keys here, essential computing slides, so it's one through four. We've got our, video, our project videos again, <coughs> excuse me, and a list of assignments. So that is what's under the modules tab. Now assignments tab is a very important place for you to go. I'm gonna cough again. Yesterday when I, like it keeps switching from show by date to show by type. If you click show by date, it should be separating these by weekly dates. I can't seem to get my computer to do it, but you do wanna, consistently. Um, I believe it's because I'm using the student view here. Uh, there, stay. There, 
Okay. So in here, if I hit show by type, it's going to separate these all into weekly units. One of the good things about this is that you can view up here and tells you what percent of your total grade it is. So I can see that week one intro chapters is 6% of my total grade. If I don't do it, the highest I can get in class is a 94. Now, each of these assignments, you can see there's a ton of stuff listed, and a common question is, do I have to do the readings? Are those graded? If you look here and you see a blank out of points, or you'd have a, maybe a 37.5 out of 40 points, that's a graded assignment that you have to do. If it has no point value here, it's not a graded assignment. You can see I have my sum points in here. Um, so make sure that you do this. It is really important that you use your assignments tab and your grades tab, not just SimNet. Because things like discussion one, introduce yourself, are not available from SimNet. The discussions are only available in Canvas. They're a Canvas activity. So not everything's in there. And as you can see, there are 40 points there. So when I click on this discussion, it's going to bring you to a discussion board. When we do our discussions, it is extremely important you use proper standard English, standard grammar, capitalization, punctuation. And there's information here about the assignment for each discussion posted in the top that what it's asking you, here's your preferred major, your name, your major, why you chose it, describe yourself, how to solve, what, um, this is, this one is a troubleshooting task that, and how you solved it, which is, wheels are going to be really fun for us to read and see all the cool tips and tricks you have for us. Um, you also have to reply to another student, and notice here that it is 50% of your grade. If you do not reply, it's an automatic 50%. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's an automatic 50% off on your grade. So you really need to do that. You need to also have a greeting and a conclusion. And an easy way to ensure that you're meeting that qualification is to look at the uh, samples. So this is a sample from Professor Marshall. And if you look here, she has her greeting to the class. She's using formal English proper grammar, um, proper punctuation, and signing off with a conclusion, or sorry, a closing. Don't forget those, those are important. Um, we also expect that of all emails that you send to the TAs and professor. We uh, prefer that you are using, you know, proper et email etiquette business, and considering a business email. And there's also an example here of a discussion reply. Discussion replies do need to be actual replies, not just, great job, oh, I liked it, something like that. This is a, a short, two short paragraphs um, in response to the um, discussion board. If you're wondering, uh, you have a grading rubric down here. And if you look down here again, your post is worth 50% and your reply is also worth 50%. If you happen to hop into the discussion board and nobody has made a post, uh, this is early for this one, so we have uh, one student who's already made a post in here. But if you go in there and it's possible that you might have been bumped from one of the groups, I'm adding everybody back into the groups this week, but that does happen once in a while. So let me know if there's no one to reply. Um, you can go ahead and email me, and I'll make sure that your group is functioning properly because you should have some replies. Um, some of the students do wait right before the end to, to submit it. Okay, moving along. All right, while we're here, I'm going to show you how to use the snipping tool because that's an example she has in here, and if you, it's in your uh, discussion post if you need to use it. One of the things that we ask that you do is if you're contacting your TA or the professor with a problem with SimNet or one of the assignments, that you send us a snip of what's going on. Um, and you also let us know what assignment and what question it is. That way we can help you quickly. Um, we do get emails where I'm having trouble with the assignment is all it says and then you know we have to correspond with you two or three times to find out what's wrong so if you go ahead and send us a snip of what's going on I think it's called grab and Mac then it helps us to answer your questions a lot more quickly so if you go down in here in the bottom you can type in snipping it pops up the snipping tool here if I click on new I can grab a piece of my screen. It doesn't matter. I don't have to grab the whole screen. I can 
just grab a little piece here. And I can add that in. Um, so go ahead and use that. You will use that to take a picture of your TA today for your uh, initial orientation grade. So that's what, how we use the snowman tool. You can also grab a highlighter. You know, maybe I want to highlight that's number two. There's a pen in there. Draw an arrow. And the pen's very hard to draw with. But uh, you can actually also save these files, save as, and you can save these snips. You know, so I saved our TA here. So we're going to use the snipping tool to grab a picture of our TA. My home screen. So again, whether you're if you're in Cove or you're in Osprey, grab a picture of your TA and take a snip of that. And we will save that. And I saved mine in my CGS folder. I'll save another one. And now I've saved that, I can upload that, and I will show you how to upload these in a few minutes. Now we're going to go down to on my favorite tab. We've done assignments. We'll go back to, oops, that's not, sorry. Assignments. Um, we're going to go back to assignments, which is my favorite tab, um, where I can see everything that I have to do and scroll down and I can look. When you have assignments that are past due and they are beyond the due date, they get bumped down to the bottom of your list here. Let's keep scrolling. Um, so you will see at the bottom we have week 12. Week 11 is a required but week 12 is an extra credit chapter. It's out of 0% right now, and it won't affect your grade until the end. So if you do these assignments, at the end of the course, they're manually put in. So you won't see a bump in your grade as you do them. Um, but I strongly suggest you do some of these extra credit chapters, especially if you're worried that your grade's on the borderline, and um, it will help you out. But also assignments that you don't that are past due will appear on the bottom. And uh, a lot of students don't realize they're down there, and you can go ahead and do those late, but you will receive a 30% penalty, and that really, really adds up. One of, I caution students against what we call rolling lates, where the first week you, where you, you know, say week three, you don't get your work done. So week four, you do week three's work. Well, now week four's work is late. Um, and then you start racking up a lot of late penalties, and those really, really hurt your grade. So please try to get things in on time. Discussion posts cannot be submitted late. Once the discussion post is closed, um, it is done. And it can't be opened again. So uh, we do get e emails on those. Hey, I forgot to do it. I, we are not able to open those, reopen those at all for you. I wish we could, but we can't. Um, so those... Very, very careful to these discussions in here and get those done on time. Get them done early. Also pay attention to the time that things are due. They're due at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So if you have an assignment that is due on Monday at 4 p.m. and you have to work until 5, you need to make sure to get that assignment done the day before and not try and get it done after work on the day it's due. You have an announcements tab that you will get announcements from us periodically. And these announcements will give you information about the class, about updates. Um, if we have a technical problem, that will be in there. Done SimNet. Grades. Last thing we'll do is grades. Um, uh, grades and then one more discussion uh, thing I need to show you. So in your grades, um, this is one of the places that I strongly suggest you use to navigate and understand what's going on. If you only access SimNet, you, you will miss things. So you, you need to be in navigating either in assignments or grades, whichever one you like, um, but they both have the information you need. A good way to find out if an assignment is required or not is to look here under out of. If it is out of zero, it is not a required assignment, but it is listed there so that you guys have access and know when they're, when these assignments should be done. This discussion one here is definitely something I have to do. It's worth 40 points, so I know that I have to get that done. So 
you can keep track of what's upcoming and what needs to be done. You can see I worked on this week two project. Um, you can click here and it'll show you details. No, no statistics yet. Um, but go ahead and you can see that there are a lot of zero assignments. Those are not required. One more thing that is kind of cool in here is we have questions. This is a discussion board that we set up for you and it's a place where you can go and post a question. It is monitored by the TAs, but we encourage students to go online and be the ones who take the initiative and answer these questions. Um, so if you figure something out, you can post it in there like, hey, there's a glitch in this and, uh, and if you click here and here, it, it solves it on a Mac, let's say, or, or you know, I don't understand why this is giving me a certain response or something like that. You can, you can post your questions in there. Do not post a whole bunch of answers. Do, don't post any cheating in there because this is monitored by the TA and professor. So um, <laughs> just give you a heads up on that. Um, the discussion for you. So if you go in here, I can view the discussion. Um, notice that there is a possibility to get extra credit in here as well if you are answering questions. Somebody here asked um, and a question on how to submit the selfie. You told them here was a suggestion. Anyway. So you can see there's a uh, people have answered and asked a lot of questions already in here. Uh, so this is a good place to go if you have questions and maybe you you just wanted to say, hey, am I am you doing this right? Any other questions? So if you have late work, please do contact the TAs and let us know what's going on. We do monitor the courses and student progress, so we, we like to know if you're having an issue, you had a really bad week, you got very behind in another class, let us know what's going on. And if you have a medical emergency, please send us documentation so that we can help you out. Um, so the last thing we need to do is our orientation assignment submission. So I'm going to click on resubmit the assignment. Okay, so it's asking you for several things in here. It asks you to take a selfie during in front of your successfully registered SIMNET account. So that SIMNET screen here. She would like you to take a, a selfie with this screen in the background. Um, click, we click into your chapters, and so that uh, uh, so that we can see that you did get registered into SIMNET. And again, if you need to know how to upload it, it's in the questions. Um, submit a screenshot of your work in the guided project. The pro I showed you in week two how to access the guided project. And a screenshot of your TA. So you need to submit those. You, could, you can copy and paste them into a Word document and upload it. Or you can just upload the files. So I can take choose file here. And I'm going to upload my TA here. I'm going to add another file. That's my project. And pretend this is, we can pretend this is my selfie. So I can upload those files and then I hit, maybe I'm going to put a comment. Yay. So much fun. And once I upload this assignment, These will be manually graded by your TAs like the discussion post so you won't get immediate, immediate feedback. Um, so give us a few days to get those done. That was an email telling me, I just got an email that told me that I submitted that to myself. So um, that is just about everything for the course. Oh, one more thing in here. Um, I can't access it through here. See. So show you how to access your email. You can send email through Canvas as well as through um, your email in MyWings. So if you click in your inbox, you have the ability to grab your class in here. This is CGS. And if you're wondering our emails, you've forgotten them. If you click teachers, we're all in here. You can just pick us. Um, if you had maybe somebody who you were want to reply to, all the students are in here. You can also get in touch with any of these. 
put a subject, um, and you can send uh, an, add an attachment here as well. So that's available for you in your Canvas. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Do you need any help with anything? I can stay after this conference and give you guys a hand if you need a hand with anything. Or if you have any questions, I would love to answer them now. <laughs> <laughs> 